Uh, all right, so let me quickly give you a demo on uh, the some of the MATLAB codes which I wrote. Uh, there are a lot of MATLAB codes here in this file, if you can see. Uh, I'll not be giving a demo of all the codes here, but I've uploaded most of the codes which were relevant to the data that we published in the paper. Um, so in this entire paper, uh, uh, we have discussed about five coding techniques and which have been divided into four sections. So first, uh, I'll just talk about the CRC coding technique which we used. Uh, as an error correction coding technique as opposed to error detection which is generally used uh, in the in the in the networks these days um, let me quickly show you how uh, we wrote up the CRC encoding uh, error correction technique so we have the CRC2 right here so this is a second order CRC generator polynomial uh, so this is the CRC uh, this is the code for that so let me quickly run the code through the command window just to show you how the outputs look like. So let's say that the data is 1110. Oops, something went wrong. Yes, I missed a CRC2 here. Yes, so the data was 1110 and we appended CRC here in this case is 00. Let's change the data and see what happens. So here the data is 1111 and the appended CRC here is 11. So this is a second order uh, CRC polynomial which is used. Uh, we also designed CRC 16 which is a 16th order CRC generator polynomial. So we can use a similar data for that. Let's say if we use 5 or 6 bits of data the output should be 6 plus 16 which is 22. We have, uh, okay we had 5 bits of data here so the output is 21 columns. So this is the appended uh, information stream which is ready to be transmitted just after the CRC encoding is done. Uh, now we mm, had some lookup tables uh, in the first section of the paper and these lookup tables give a one-on-one -on -one correspondence of the remainder that is generated uh, when the CRC is computed as a checksum at the receiver's end. So this remainder which is generated has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the error location uh, in the information stream that was transmitted. Uh, so for one bit errors we have this uh, code right here which will generate a lookup table matrix which uh, will look something like this so here is the matrix that is being generated so this essentially means that if the remainder is one then the error was at the first location if the remainder is two the error was at the second location if the remainder computed was 24 then the error was at the 15th location and so on. So if you see that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, right? If the remainder which is computed at the receiver's end, if it turns out to be 30, then the receiver knows that, okay, if there was a one-bit error in the system, then my error was at the ninth bit. So what it essentially does is it will flip the, uh, it will flip the bit at the ninth bit and then, oops, something went wrong here. Yeah, It will flip the bit at the ninth location and then it will, uh, generate the correctly received code word in that case. So we also uh, extended this to two bit errors. Uh, so this is the MATLAB code for generating the lookup table for two bit error correction using CRC. So here if you see this what it what, what this table shows is if you have the error at the first location and the second location then the remainder that is generated at the receiver's end while computing the checksum is 31. So now if the remainder generated the receiver while doing the computations is 125, it means that the error was at the third location and it was at the 12th location. So that was about the first error correction technique. Now uh, let's quickly move on to uh, take a look at some of the simulations for the second error correction technique that we used which was uh, trellis assisted uh, trellis coded uh, CRC system which is assisted by CRC and bit stuffing. So this was one of the most uh, interesting papers which I referred to and I think during the entire phase of the design this was the most challenging part to be designed in MATLAB because it uses the concept of an extended trellis which is kind of a two-dimensional trellis structure and then it also uses the concept of uh, extended uh, trellis along with the modified Witter by algorithm. So we actually designed the modify Witter by algorithm using uh, using MATLAB. We'll, we'll just quickly show you some of the simulations that we have right here. So let's 
So let's see what happens at the encoder. At the encoder, we have bit stuffing going on, and then we append CRC to it, and then we transmit the data using uh, a trellis. Uh, using a trellis encoder, which is nothing but a convolutional encoder, uh, a 214 convolutional encoder. So we just showed you how CRC works. Let me quickly show you how the bit stuffing would work in this case. So here in bit stuffing, what we are doing is, whenever we get an input stream of uh, five consecutive ones, what we do is we append a zero after that. So here we are sending five consecutive ones. So after bit stuffing, uh, an extra zero will be appended to it. Now let's take a look at the trellis uh, encoder, which is nothing but the convolutional encoder, which is there. Oops, I opened the wrong file. Yes, we have the trellis coder here. So this is nothing but a 214 convolutional code, which is implemented. Uh, so all these functions have been called through a main function, which is called the trellis encode which first calls the CRC function, and then it calls the bit stuffing function, and then it calls the trellis coding function. So if you have an input stream, and if you just pass it through the trellis encode function, then you get an output which looks something like this. So this is the trellis encoded data that is being transmitted. And now we have the trellis decoder here. And this was the most uh, difficult part of uh, designing the decoder. Now, this is the entire program that I uh, the matrix is based on the modified Witter by algorithm, which has been discussed in, in, the, in the paper, which we refer to. So here I've designed the modified Witter by algorithm. And then uh, this uses the concept of extended trellis as well. So to now this was just about the encoder and the decoder part. But we also designed a, a nice, uh, a small nice communication system where we are using the BPSK modulation along with the AWGN channel. So we designed the BPSK modulation scheme. Uh, let me quickly show you some of the simulation results that we have for this particular scheme. So the BPSK modulation scheme that we designed will take up input binary data. It will polar encode it using polar NRZ encoding. It has some AWG and noise, which is modeled uh, by different variance levels. And then this is the BPSK modulated signal, uh, uh, which you can see right here. And then again, it uses some integrator and estimators uh, at, at, at the decoder, uh, at the receiver end, to estimate what the binary data was transmitted. So this is how it looks like. So here in this case, we see there is not a lot of noise coming into the picture. So whatever was transmitted was being received at the receiver. So we used this uh, communication system, and then we uh, designed another function, which is the BPSK modulation. And there is a channel in between, and there is a D BPSK demodulation, which is going on, which we just had a look at. And then this is for a trellis encoded system. So here, if you see that the noise variance level that I'm using is 4. And then what essentially I want to do here is I'm transmitting a certain number of packets to the, through the system. So the total number of packets which I want to transmit through the system is, say, uh, 5 in this case. And we give it as an argument to the function. And we will take a look at how many of these packets were successfully been received at the receiver's end. So now we are transmitting 5 packets through a trellis encoded system, which has been modulated over BPSK. And the channel is AWGN here. So it will give us an estimate on how many packets we received successfully out of the five packets that we transmitted. Uh, again, I would like to mention the fact that for the purpose of simulations, we exhaustively simulated for different noise variance levels that essentially gave us different EB by N0 values. And then we sent more than oh, something wrong here. Yeah, so the computations are going on. It shows that the system is busy. Uh, so we, we transmitted around 100 packets for different noise variance levels, and that's how we got the results. So we generated a lot of data and did data analysis on it. Okay, it's taking more than what I expected it to take. Let's quickly close it. Uh, 
let's take a look at what happens when there is no channel encoding in the in the system so here we just use a bpsk modulation and then we have a channel and a bpsk demodulation and then we are again sending say five packets so if you see three out of these five packets were received successfully so now if we reduce the noise variance in the system say we reduce it to 0 0.1 we will have all the packets received successfully so here all the pack all the five packets are received successfully now let's go back to the bpsk demodulation uh, with the trellis coded data so let's say we want to transmit uh, four packets in this case let's see how the output looks like So here the success is zero, which means that the first packet was not received properly at the receiver. Yes, it says the success is one now, which means that the second packet was received successfully at the receiver's end. So some of the simulations even uh, took the entire night to complete because when we you know have different for loops different iterations the amount of computation that is done is really really tremendous and most of these simulations were were done on the server so that we get a faster speed but then uh, some of the simulations were done on my personal laptop which uh, when i expected uh, the computation amount of computation to be done to be less so here out of the five packets that we sent two out of those five packets were received successfully now if we reduce the amount of noise variance in the system then and we rerun it for four packets yeah. probably all the four packets will be received successfully at the receiver so here when the noise values are less when the EB by N0 ratio is more essentially uh, the success rate or uh, the packet success rate is more which intuitively also makes sense so this was all about the trellis coding uh, that we did uh, let me also show you some of the graphs that we plotted so here I have some of the graphs that I plotted for various different cases using different error channels using different size of data packets using uh, different CRC uh, encoding schemes and things like that so in this graph we use CRC 16 we calculate the percentage of successfully decoded packets we see how the bit error uh, how with increasing the bit error rate the percentage of successfully decoded packet goes down and uh, so we plot this for various different channels this is the burst error channel so if you see this uh, encoding does not really perform well for burst errors this is uh, the random bit error channel with CRC 16 this is the AWGN channel with CRC2 these are the different data size packets that we are using and so all of these results are uh, given in my website so if you want to take a look at my website where I have published this, these results you can definitely go ahead and take a look at it so if you go to academics if you go to projects so here is the wireless communications project which I have uploaded on the web page on my personal web page so here if you click if you want to get the MATLAB code for this table generated you just need to click here and the MATLAB code is up right here alright so we have all the d data plotted here and we have uh, a lot of things going on we have the link for the final project report we have the link for the project proposal so the third error coding technique which we discuss in the paper is the Reed Solomon uh, error correction technique uh, we typically discuss this because in the trellis encoded system which we saw right now we saw that the system is not working well for the burst errors so we design a Reed Solomon code with an interleaver uh, so this is the Reed Solomon code for the interleaver so here we have the length of code as 255 the length of data symbol as 235 
and then we have we are giving some input data we are having a burst we are giving a burst of length 20 and let's see how the outputs look like so here essentially what we are trying to achieve is we are trying to send an input data and then we are saying that the burst in the channel is uh, the burst the maximum amount of bursts that a channel can produce here we are assuming it to be 20 uh, now this number 20 is beyond the error correction capability of this read solomon code so the error correction capability of this read solomon code is 10 so now what happens if the amount of burst in a system is more than the error correction capability of the system so in that case here we have the input data as I am a student of University of Florida this is a part of wireless communication final project I'm trying to study the burst error correction capability of the Reed Solomon code let us see if interleaving helps in such a situation okay now this is the data that we are transmitting now the interleaved data would look something like this where we are trying to replicate each and every alphabet in the stream thrice so we are trying to repeat each and every alphabet three times so I gets repeated three times the space gets repeated three times and so on so here if you see the number of errors that are being produced is 20 right so but what interleaving essentially helps us with is it helps to reduce the entire uh, entire length of the burst so here the output after de interleaving is I am a uh, and then you have some stars which means that there are seven errors so essentially what happened in this case is the entire 20 bit uh, burst length got reduced to a 7 bit burst length and then the 7 bit burst length can definitely be corrected by these read Solomon codes which have an error correction capability of 10 so this is how interleaving helps in designing systems uh, in designing systems mm -hmm. which operate on uh, on a bursty channel yeah sorry about these things popping up uh, I think there is something wrong with the uh, color combination uh, so let's take a final look at uh, some of the BER versus EV by N0 plots. So this is the BER versus EV by N0 plot. So here we have the turbo coding which uh, turns out to be the best in this scenario. We have the modified Witter by and we have the uncoded data. So this is the EV by N0 and DB versus the packet error rate. Again we have the BER versus EV by N0 for turbo and LDPC codes. So let's see how it looks like. So this is the final graph. Here if you see the data that we transmit is uh, around uh, 100 bits in length. Here if you see it turns out that the LDPC code is a little bit better than the, uh, sorry, the turbo code is a little bit better than the LDPC code which is given in blue right here. So uh, in a discussion with Dr. Wu, I, I kind of figured out that uh, LDPC codes perform better than turbo codes if the size of the transmitted data is more than 8000 bits and they and the LDPC code would perform uh, worse than the turbo codes if the size of the data is it is less than 800 bits so in this scenario we see that you know our simulation results match exactly what the findings uh, in the theory are so that's about it that's about all the codes that I've written um, and thank you very much for listening